There are tons of child actors that were once on the silver screen becoming beloved figures in entertainment. However, as time advanced, the limelight gradually dimmed for many of these adorable stars. Few opted for early retirement, while others struggled to transition to adult roles. A portion of them chose to pursue alternative careers, and some found a home on television. The diverse paths they took revealed the multifaceted nature of their experiences in the world of show business. You're the bodyguard, aren't you? What do you know about it? I've got ears. Even though he had made previous appearances in films, it wasn't until his role as Fletcher, the son of Whitney Houston's character in The Bodyguard, that Devon Nixon truly garnered recognition. He was noticed again in Sugar Hill in 1994. After college, he vanished from the scene and briefly worked as a mortgage broker, but later resurfaced as a guest on The Unit, JAG, and many other TV shows. He is the son of NBA legend Norm Nixon and choreographer Debbie Allen. In 2022, he depicted his father in the HBO series The Rise of the Lakers Dynasty. Bumper Robinson's big screen debut was in the 1985 sci-fi Enemy Mine. While he was cast in at least three other films, the majority of his career has been on episodic television. Over the years, he became known for his charming cameos on shows like The Facts of Life, Punky Brewster, and Cagney and Lacey. But could you tell me where the ladies' room is? <clears throat> Same place as the men's room. As he matured, he played recurring figures on series such as The Game, Living Single, and A Different World. That's right, Lena. And that's one of the reasons why I don't believe in premarital sex. It's late, and I'll talk to you about it tomorrow. He has also pursued voice acting from 2003 to the present. In 2015, he showed up in two episodes of Blackish and in four episodes of Black AF in 2020. Raven Kelly is known for portraying young Anna Mae Bullock in What's Love Got to Do With It when she was only seven years old. Her talent then extended to roles in A Time to Kill and Ghosts of Mississippi. Her TV stints began with parts on ER, Roseanne, City of Angels, and Rock. Currently, she is deeply involved in activist work, upholding human rights across several communities. As a child, George Gore made his mark as Q's younger brother Brian in the 1992 film Juice. How'd you get arrested? What? Where'd you hear that? From a smile. From there, some of his other works include The Devil's Advocate and Dance Flick. Becoming a household name, he co-starred with Malik Yoba as his son on the series New York Undercover and alongside Tisha Campbell Martin and Damon Wayans as their goofy son Michael Kyle Jr. on My Wife and Kids from 2001 to 2005. So how do I know when it's done? Here, let me see your wrist. Ow! <laughs> that means it's too hot. Uh, try the other wrist. <laughs> Still, he didn't stop there. He voiced the character D-Rock in the TV film A Boo Crew Christmas in 2017. Before he turned 12, Brandon Hammond had a string of movies already under his belt, appearing in the critically acclaimed films Menace to Society and Waiting to Exhale. Yet he first adorned himself to fans in 1997 in the family-oriented motion picture Soul Food as Big Mama's grandson Ahmad, who advocated for family unity. His good faith didn't just touch souls, it granted him a well-deserved NAACP award for Outstanding Youth Actor. Brandon continued his career with recurred roles on series like Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman and The Gregory Hines Show. His final performance was in the made-for-TV movie Our America in 2002. In his adult life, he transitioned into a filmmaker displaying his innovative talents by writing and directing short films. Jermaine Hopkins was initially introduced to audiences as Thomas Sams, a misguided drug-abusing junior high school student in the 80s film Lean on Me. Mr. Clark, I wanted to talk to you about those kids you brought yesterday. What's your name, son? Sams, Thomas Sams. He found a streak of success in the 90s in Juice, Fat Beach, and Def Jam's How to Be a Player, before landing on TV in the WB sitcom The Wayans Brothers for six episodes as Sean and Marlon's friend Dupree. In the aftermath, his career took unexpected turns as he encountered repeated legal run-ins with authorities and a decrease in screen time. Bouncing back from these hurdles, he starred in the 2020 film Equal Standard and Asbury Park in 2021. 
Desi Arnaz Hines II played 10-year-old Trey Stiles in Boys in the Hood in 1991. Mr. Stiles, how is it you always have something funny to say? Because I'm a comedian. <laughs> He continued to explore his passion for acting in television productions, including The Steve Harvey Show in 1999, and in two episodes of Staged in 2017. Dewan Guy was just 11 years old when he scored the role of the firestarter who kicked off the flame to burn Candyman to smithereens. Burn him. What many people don't know is that he was discovered by director John Singleton three years earlier at the Marla Gibbs Crossroads Theater Academy in California after Singleton observed Dewan reenact a scene from A Raisin in the Sun. He went on to shine in numerous films and TV shows like In Living Color, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Sister Sister, and Boston Public. My problem is I'm going after both Tia and Tamara. Neither twin feels special. I gotta make a choice. How are you gonna choose between Tia and Tamara? He's now a happily married father of several children. Kaylin and Kylan Bolton, the twins known for their collaborative performances as Jody and Yvette's son in Baby Boy, have limited film credits. Be that as it may, they featured in television episodes of Mismatch in 2003 and Monk in 2009. Following their service in the United States Army, both twins have chosen to maintain privacy in their personal lives, a decision they continue to uphold in their adult years. If you're a fan of 1993's Menace to Society, then you probably caught Julian Roy Doster playing Anthony, Jada Pinkett Smith's on-screen son. Hey. What's up? Want to play me a boxing? <laughs> what you think? Although Julian fulfilled previous acting engagements, not much is known about his output after the early 90s. Alicia Allen was brought into the spotlight in the Ice Cube comedies Are We There Yet? and its sequel Are We Done Yet? You know, if you're thinking about my mom, you're wasting your time. Because mom's still into dad, and he's totally into her. I'm happy for him. Prior to that, you might have gotten a glimpse of her as the flower girl in The Best Man. Before withdrawing from the entertainment industry, she made her last film appearance in You're Nobody Till Somebody Kills You in 2012. Focusing on her academics, she received a bachelor's and a master's degree with honors. She is currently a speech-language pathologist helping both children and adults communicate at their best. As we stroll down this nostalgic memory lane, the laughter and charisma of these child stars remind us of the magic they brought to our screens. Here's to wishing them the most dazzling futures, filled with boundless success. Thanks for watching.